Good morning, friends. This is Pastor Kenny Lee coming to you on a, on a wet, cool Friday from the Sanctuary of Marvel with today's daily devotional. I'm trying to get around and get things accomplished a little early this morning. Our delivery for Open Door Food Pantry is slated for mid-morning and we will be working in the rain from the look of things. Um, we're hoping to place our pallets under the edge of the building that we're currently using in order to allow our um, materials to stay dry and our helpers to stay as dry as possible. It's going to be a tough day to distribute food. If you can uh, come out and join us, our distribution is at two o'clock and I'm not sure when the um, truck is coming, but you can be in contact with Miss Barbie Washburn or Miss Beth Schaffhauser, and they'll be happy to um, let you come and help out. Before we open God's word this morning, I want to invite you into a moment of prayer with me. Let us pray. Holy God, we give you thanks for this day that you have given us. We thank you for an opportunity to be in your house. We thank you for your word that continues to speak deeply to our hearts. Today, O oh God, we ask that through the power of your spirit, our minds would be enlightened, our hearts would be enlivened, and our living would be embodiment of Jesus Christ. And for it's in his name that we pray. Amen. Our scripture passage today comes to us from Romans 4, and I'll be reading verses 1 through 12. What are we to say? I'm sorry. What then are we to say was gained by Abraham, our ancestor, according to the flesh? For if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now to one who works, wages are not reckoned as a gift, but as something due. But the one who without works trusts him, who justifies the ungodly, such faith is reckoned as righteousness. So also David speaks of the blessedness of those whom God reckons righteous apart from works. Blessed are those whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the one against whom the Lord will not reckon sin. Is this blessedness then pronounced only on the circumcised or also on the uncircumcised? We say faith was reckoned to Abraham as righteousness. How then was it reckoned to him? Was it before or after he had been circumcised? It was not after but before he was circumcised. He received the sign of circumcision as a sign of the seal of the righteousness that he had by faith while he was still uncircumcised. The purpose was to make him the ancestors of all who believed without being circumcised and who thus have righteousness reckoned to them. And likewise, the ancestor of the circumcised who are not only circumcised but are also following the example of the faith that our ancestor had, ancestor Abraham had before he was circumcised. This is the word of God for us, the people of God, to which we respond, thanks be to God. So Paul continues his encouragement of the Roman church, which remember from yesterday's devotional, is going through a, a season of, of conflict within the body. It, the church in Rome is made up of both Jews and Gentiles, and for a time they were probably a predominantly Jewish church with some Gentile followers, and at some point because of the emperor's exile of all Jews from Rome, the church became entirely Gentile and so some of those Jewish customs that may have been a part of their church tradition had kind of been let go by the wayside and now when the Jewish the Jews begin to return they are uh, upset because things aren't the way that they left them um, too often we get in this uh, we get in this rut of worship wars and I've seen this happen before where you have a younger group of people who are grounded in contemporary music and they want a freer form of worship and they feel more at home in a fellowship hall or a family life center. And then there's another group within the church who 
are grounded in traditional music and they want to worship in the sanctuary and they want the organ and the hymns and the piano and and what happens is that there's a divisiveness that comes within the congregation and before you know it what you have is two groups of people who are much smaller than they would be if they were together and and they don't want to co-mingle they don't want to enter inner inner mingle with one another and so one group has their worship in one place and one group has their worship in another and the only thing that they have in common is they're all supporting a budget they're all supporting a pastoral staff and they're all worshiping in the in the same facility but not in the same place in the facility even their kids tend to not be able to mingle because you end up with worship times that are that are offset in order that the pastor can uh, minister in both places. Abraham is the progenitor of the Jewish faith, but he's also the father of Ishmael through um, Sarah's servant girl, Hagar. And he is also uh, figures large in the Christian worldview. And so we have Abraham as the as the beginning point for what amounts to three world religions. And Paul uses that to help people in Rome to understand that this conflict that they're embroiled in at the current time is really frivolous, that they don't really need to be um, in this in this time where they're being torn apart or they're, or they're not acting in love toward one another. Sometimes loving people that we share worship space can be as difficult as loving people that we live with or, or are a part of our family. But we are called to love them nonetheless, not always as a warm, fuzzy feeling or emotion, but always, always as a choice in the presence of God as the right thing to do as we are Christians following Jesus Christ. I have a beautiful hymn that I want to share with you this morning. I think you're going to love. This is a hymn of Charles Wesley, Lift Up Your Voice. It is a purely choral piece, no music with it, just voices. I've listened to part of it and it is amazing. I will include the link to this video in the description to when I post this daily devotional later today. Let's listen together.
Well, as you can see, I didn't listen to the entire psalm because we did get a little bit of organ there on that last verse. I hope that you enjoyed that music. I certainly did. More importantly, I hope that you have found a moment to be connected to God. If you don't have a church home and you're watching this video, I want to invite you to come and join us this Sunday, 845. If you'd like to join us at Lexa United Methodist Church, that's on 2nd Street in Lexa, Arkansas. 11 o'clock if you'd like to join us in our sanctuary worship here at Marvel United Methodist Church. We'd love to have you come and visit. Before we end our time together and end our five, succession of five daily devotionals for this week, let us offer together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Hope that you Enjoy the, your weekend, and I look forward to seeing you next week. In the meantime, continue to follow Jesus.